Good afternoon, and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Dan Centella. And I'm Kelly Volk. The Rapid City Fire Department has released new video and information about this morning's explosion. Now check out this it video as crews arrived on scene. Investigators say a vehicle crashed into a house which caused a gas leak. The house then exploded and burst into flames. The fire spread to another home and threatened others. Crews say there was still gas coming out of the line, sending flames 15 to 20 feet into the air. And authorities evacuated the neighborhood. Families have since been able to return. Two people were taken to the hospital. At least three families were displaced by the explosion. We're following some breaking news out of Washington, D.C. The Pentagon has shot down an unknown object flying in U.S. airspace off the coast of Alaska. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby says the object was flying about 40,000 feet and posed a, quote, reasonable threat. Kirby says President Biden ordered the military to shoot down the object. This comes after the U.S. shot down a suspected Chinese balloon on Saturday. The Rushmore Hotel in Rapid City was packed with people hoping to voice their opinions on proposed social studies standards. Opponents are asking for a redo of the standards after they've come under a lot of criticism. Supporters point to the groups that have endorsed the proposed content. There was also a group outside protesting the standards. The final public hearing will be on April 17th at the Ramcota in Pier. Governor Kristi Noem signed an executive order declaring a disaster in several counties hit hard by winter storms in December. The order states that federal resources are needed to help with recovery efforts. The state estimates the winter storms caused nearly two and a half million dollars in damage. The blizzards in December put the entire state at a standstill as the snow piled on for several days, cutting off access to entire communities and stranding drivers. And uh, fortunately, we're not dealing with that today, Megan. Not a bad day in Sioux Falls, at least, when I was outside. No, not at all, Kelly, and it's going to be even nicer tomorrow. Temperatures reaching nearly 40 in eastern Kelowna. Right now, though, Sioux Falls sitting at 32 degrees and no clouds in the sky. Aberdeen, similar at 30 with plenty of sunshine this afternoon. We have been warmer in Pierce, sitting at 46. Most of the snow is off the ground at this point, and Rapid is sitting at 50 degrees this afternoon with plenty of sunshine. There are our afternoon temperatures. We are in the 30s across eastern Kelowna, 40s and even low 50s across western South Dakota. Right now, Buffalo is our warm spot at 53 degrees. We do have a south wind right now, 10 to even 20 miles an hour. We could see a few higher wind gusts coming out of this, but this will help bring in our warm air for tomorrow. For tonight, though, mostly clear skies. Sioux Falls could be a bit breezy in the overnight hours with a low of 20, 16 in Aberdeen, 24 in Pier, and 25 in Rapid City. Tomorrow, plenty of sunshine, light winds, 37 are high in Sioux Falls, 36 in Aberdeen, 50 in Pier, and 50 in Rapid City. And then Sunday will be very similar. But we are keeping an eye on the middle of next week for our next chance of rain or snow. We'll have more details in just a little bit. Thank you, Megan. A bill in the Minnesota legislature to guarantee free meals at schools is moving forward. The Minnesota House approved the proposal. It now heads to the Senate. Right now, the federal government pays for free or reduced meals, but that is limited based on income. Under this bill, the state of Minnesota would pick up the tab for the rest of the students. It's estimated to cost $388 million in the next two-year budget. Vice President Kamala Harris made a stop in Minnesota to tour an electric bus plant. Harris says electric buses are the key to the future of public transportation in America. She says the Biden administration's investment in electric vehicles are creating a clean energy economy while creating good paying jobs. So, Minnesota, this is a transformative moment. The climate crisis has presented an historic challenge to our nation and to the world. It also presents a historic opportunity.
to create good jobs, to drive innovation, to generate prosperity in all communities. President Biden, Harris, and cabinet members are touring the country, showcasing the administration's economic agenda. Lawmakers are calling on the rail industry to do more for workers and guarantee at least seven paid sick days. Cal Land News, Washington, D.C. correspondent Basil John has the story. Republican and Democratic senators on Capitol Hill are demanding better treatment for rail workers. The American people are sick and tired of the type of corporate greed we are seeing in that industry. Thursday, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders and Indiana Senator Mike Braun joined advocates to demand at least seven paid sick days for railway workers. In the year 2023, that is not a whole lot to ask. When I heard that you didn't have a guaranteed sick day, I wondered how could you get by with that? in this day and age. You don't know when you're going to get sick. Some organizations like the Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way employees reached an agreement with CSX Railroad to provide paid sick days, and they say other companies should follow their example. All maintenance away workers and all the workers uh, of the employees that are represented by the, the men that stand behind me um, deserve a sick leave uh, agreement. Sanders and Braun point out that since some rail companies made more than $22 billion in profits last year, they can afford more sick time. I hope that the companies, that the corporations do the right thing. I hope they do it voluntarily and we're making some progress. I'm hoping too this solves itself through the network of common sense. Sanders promises if he doesn't see change, he will question railway executives under oath in a Senate hearing. Reporting in Washington, I'm Basil John.